in at all times. Any unattended baggage will be removed and may be destroyed by security services. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all very well. Welcome to this Dad Rail live stream. We will be driving on the Brighton Main Line with the Class 66 in Train Sim World 3. Starting on time in around about 8 minutes.
Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Stadrail live stream, class 66 on the Brighton Mainline in Trains in World 3. We will be starting in 5 minutes time. That's 5 minutes time for this Trains in World 3 live stream. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested in supporting myself and the DadRail project, then you can click on the little join button for channel membership starting from just 99p for exclusive benefits. So whilst you're waiting for the stream, click on there and check it out. Passengers are reminded that smoking is prohibited at all stations and on all train services. Ladies and gentlemen, please have your drinks and light refreshments ready with emphasis on the tea and biscuits. This Dadrow stream will be starting in around about two minutes. Please have your drinks and light refreshments, especially tea and biscuits, ready for the stream.
everybody, how are we all doing this evening? Hope you are well. Welcome to this live stream on Train Sim World 3, Class 66 on the Brighton Mainline. If this happens to be the first video you've seen by me, then my name is Richard and I am a former passenger train driver and a current freight train driver based in the southeast of England. I've also got four wonderful children who are all fast asleep in bed, thank goodness, so no disturbances, which is where the dad rail name comes from. So who have we got in tonight in the chat? Keith Jones. Keith Jones says pressure on Richard. It, there's always pressure. Always pressure. Uh, Emma Wright, Supertram, James Campbell, GJ Barnard, DET Trains, Lawrence Adams, uh, Train Driver Sam, I see, who is off to drive a real train as well. Ah, tough luck, Sam. We'll catch you next time. Uh, British Film Guy, Rowan Plays and Railways of Cornwall. Great to have you all here tonight in this stream. So guys, I think we actually managed to start on time tonight, which has got to be an absolute first for a Dad Rouse stream. So that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Hopefully that's playing. I can't hear it at my end. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, new toys. Playing with new toys. And I've also got one thing to say. Tea and biscuits with the manager happens far too often, so... I don't drink tea. We'll go with that one. Right. We are going to be having all of our usual features in the stream tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be playing our very popular game. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Today's picture has been provided by the Railways of Cornwall. I'm not very good with my Cornish Railway, so uh, hopefully this one's going to prove a little bit of a challenge for you. We are also going to be jumping, as always, guys, in and out of the... I've got to find the right buttons, right? We're going to be jumping in and out of Discord server as we go along, which is working. 66s, 455s, 450s, and 73s. Beautiful. If you want to post any pictures um, for me to put up on the screen, then head over to the Discord server. You'll find the link in the description below. And, oh, I'm burping, pardon me. And you will find us in the live stream pictures page. Post what you want in there, um, as long as it is railway or transport related, and it is of a... Um, Family viewing nature, shall we say. Suitable for family viewing. So, without further ado, that is enough chatter from me. Not quite enough chatter from me. I do have to tell you, of course, that all the views and opinions expressed in this video are solely my own and may not reflect those of any companies that I am employed by or associated with. Right, that is enough chatter from me now. I'm sure these introductions are getting longer. Let's jump into Train Scene World 3. And we will see if we can get this to work. So, um, timetable mode. Uh, we are going to select the Class 66 EWS, which is my last played. Um, there is a dad rail livery for the 66 that someone sent me a picture of earlier. I kind of need to go through Creators Club and see if I can download that. It's pretty nice. Um, so we've got several varieties of it. We'll go for the... Let's go for the bottom one. Um, we're going to do the London Commuter. Because I like the London Commuter. Um, trains involved, we've got all of those. And we're going to work 7 Victor 00. New Haven Day Aggregates to Acton TC. I should know what the TC stands for, but you know what? I don't, which is really bad. Um... 17th of September, dynamic weather, and we'll start off on clear and see where it goes. Um, what is the T? I, I sign Acton Yard. I really should know what TC stands for. Let's press get started and see what happens. Why that is loading up, ladies and gentlemen, that is an ideal opportunity for us to play the first round of our very, very popular game. Post your numbers now. For locomotive livery location. That's it. I want your numbers in the chat between 1 and 25. And I will pick the third one that comes up on my screen. Richard the Train Spotter and more. How are you doing? Hope you're good. Great to see you here. Right, we'll click get started as soon as we have done locomotive location livery. Astro, you are the first one, followed by Noon01. Pig and Bob, who was very happy that I called him a legend in the last stream. Pig and Bob, you are a legend because you bought a dad rail mug. So that makes you a legend. Uh, you have picked number 13. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Going to give you number 13. Smack bang in the middle of the board there, ladies and gentlemen. So if you haven't seen this game before, I'm going to reveal what's behind box number 13. You have got 10 seconds to tell me the locomotive livery and location. Here we go. 
Half a train? What colour is that though? Is that blue, black? It's a bit washed out. Do you know? Let me know your thoughts in the chat. Okay, right. 7 Victor 0 0. New Haven Days aggregates to Acton TC. Uh, drive this freight, tra freight train from Withersfield to Clapham Junction. Class 66, 528.9 tonnes, so we are empty. 19 wagons and 292.6 yards. Now I'm hoping. Oh no! This is really annoying because this is not the correct 66. Now I'm not quite sure what's going on with this. I'm going to have to try and restart the game. But some of the 66s in Train Sim World 3, I'm not getting the um, train length indicator and I'm not getting the proper EM2000 screen, which is really, really irritating. And I had this issue, I filmed a video yesterday about full prep on a Class 66, and I had the same issue. And the only 66 I could get working properly was the one in the um, training centre. But I have had the correct 66 on this route. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on and exactly why that's not working, but that is really, really irritating. Um, we'll try choosing one of the other 66s and see if we can't get that to do what it should do. Uh, so I wonder if we pick the... Uh, should we... We'll try the DBS one. No, because that's not coming up as available for East Coastway. Um, was it the bottom one we just tried or the top one? I can't remember. Right, let's try the... We haven't tried that one. Let's try that one. Right, there we are. Get started. Row and place. This happened to me as well. I think it's the second one down from the top. Hopefully. Hopefully it's going to work. We want to uh, DT trains. Like, this happens to me too. It's really annoying. Um, right. Right. Oh, yay, we're in business. We have the correct 66, which is brilliant. So guys, little declaration, I do sign the Brighton mainline in real life and I do sign class 66s and I will be driving, this train's come from New Haven, I'm going to Clapham, I will be driving this service next week. So if I, if I can't do this right, it's a big tea and biscuits for the manager moment. So let's start by getting the train ready, let's see what we need to do set up wise. So we need some lights, um, day running will be good, let's get our... Let's get our safety systems put back in. As you know, I like to drive with safety systems on. So we've got our DSD there and our um, AWS TPWS. Get the key in. Uh, parking brake is currently off. So we have got um, J and A wagons. Now these wagons actually run in pass timings in real life, but for some reason in game, the train is currently set up for goods. So we're gonna change our brake timing over to pass, which means our brakes will apply and release um, slightly quicker, or quite considerably quicker. Uh, brake cutout, we want that cut in. Brakes are currently cut in, that is good. So we are more or less ready to move. So what we want to do, we've, we've got the parking brake off there. We're going to put the direct brake into full apply and recharge the brake pipe up to five bars. DT trains 43, can you use the train lamp indicator on this route? We certainly can, so we should probably get that set up. So, brake pipe's on 5 bar, just wait for the airflow indicator to drop back, which it's just doing. Um, before we move, we will set up our train length on the train length indicator here. So I did put out a video yesterday about cold start and full prep on a Class 66, and there's some sort of real life footage um, overlaid. So if you saw that video yesterday, you'll know that we also use this, um, the data cord, otherwise known as the Qtron, to enter our PIN numbers whenever we take over a train. So that's basically how we log into the train. So we are 292.6 yards. We're going to roughly times that by three to convert it into um, feet. So we're going to pay 900 feet. So train length, nine, enter to edit, nine, zero, zero, enter. And there we go, perfect. Safety systems are on. We have got a green signal. So what we are going to do is put it into forward. We're going to give it two notches of power. And we're going to release the direct brake. What we also want to be doing is poking our head out the window 
and just having a look down the train. So anytime you depart from a station platform, you want to put your head out the window and just check there's no one hanging off the edge of the train or, or being stupid or train surfing or anything like that. Green signal. Off we go. So what we're doing is notching up gradually. We want to go up one notch at a time. Just pause for a second or half a second in each notch. That's all we need to do, really. This train is empty, not very heavy, so um, shouldn't be too much of an issue getting away. And we're in notch eight. Brilliant. So in terms of our ammeter, um, between anywhere in the green is obviously ideal. If we're up between six and seven, that's not too much of an issue, providing we're not there for too long. Between seven and eight, you want to be taking the power back. You don't want to be hovering in that area. Um, if the engine amps get too high, the engine will just cut out on you. Um, or say the engine will cut out, you'll, you'll drop all your amps. Oh, a little bit of stuttering going on there. What are we getting? 80 frames per second, not too bad, not too bad. So what we want to do once we reach 30 miles an hour is we want to carry out a running brake test. The idea of a running brake test is just so we as the driver can ascertain how the brakes are performing on the train. And the way we do that is by just shutting down the power. So we're going down one notch at a time, nice and slowly. Once we get to notch one, we're going to pause and we're just going to let the engine amps drop off. So once the engine amps drop off to about um, 1,000 we can just shut that off completely. And we're going to apply the brakes into the initial position. And what we want to observe is a 10 mile an hour reduction in speed. So we're kind of just assessing how the brakes are working, um, if the brakes are working, how powerful they are and that sort of thing. So we've gone from 45 down to around 35 there which is brilliant. And we can start powering up again one notch at a time. So we can see from our screen here that we are running, uh, not that screen there, when I find it, we are running 7 Victor 00. So being a class 7, I know that the maximum permitted speed of this train is 45 miles an hour. Now I don't believe in train sim, it's actually timed for 45, but class 7s would be 45 miles an hour only. So class one, uh, class zero, class one, class two, you can run at line speed subjects when you lower restrictions on the um, on the train. Uh, class four is a maximum of 75, class five would be line speed again. Class six is a maximum speed of 60, class seven is a maximum speed of 45, class eight is a maximum speed of 35, um, and class nine used to be international trains only, but I believe Thames Link used class nine, um, and a few other operators as well. So if we're driving the train properly, which we should be doing, we're not going to exceed 45 miles an hour, which I'm already doing. Right, let's try and catch up with your chat as we come through Hayward Teeth. We've got 163 of you lovely people in there, which is absolutely superb. So if you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be brilliant. Uh, Aeronautics237 didn't know there was a Class Zero. Um, class Zero would be a light engine. Uh, yeah, Class Zero is light engine. Uh, Maxwell, hello, sorry I'm late, been watching Frozen Planet. Oh, that's a brilliant series, that really is. Um, DET Trains 43, I'm on Xbox One and can't use the Class 66s on the Brighton mainland. Oh, that's interesting. I know there's been some issues porting the existing routes, the older routes over to Train Sim World 3 on some of the platforms. So yeah, not, not entirely sure if it's that. Um, Southeast Rail Productions, you're working the Freightliner surface. It's the enemy. It's the enemy within. Um, Davidoff, evening, how are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. Mum Rail is very good as well. Um, she's at work tonight, doing a bit in the hospital. So we need to turn our instrument lights on there as well. Probably a good idea. So coming into Haywards Heath. 90 mile an hour maximum line speed. If we're going over the crossovers, it is 40, then up to 70. I told you I knew the route. <laughs> uh, James Harrison, does the train tell you a red light is coming up? Uh, no. So train sim will tell me a red light is coming up because we've got our heads up displays here, but there's nothing in the train to tell me that we've got a red light coming up. What we do have 
is the AWS Sunflower, which is this indicator here. When we're running on green signals, this indicator will be black. Um, when we're running on yellow or cautionary signals, or we've passed over, um, passed over what's called an AWS magnet, which is the buzzer you hear go off sometimes, that'll change to yellow and black. But there's nothing to tell us we're specifically coming towards a red signal. So we are now approaching Copy Hold Junction. Plodding along at a, a lovely 45 miles an hour. Uh, Rafe the train spotter, hello Richard, it's my birthday, I'm 24, happy birthday Rafe. Uh, Aeronautics 237, I thought class 5 was light ending, class 5 is empty coaching stock. Uh, knife by a kangaroo, have you ever forgotten to do an important task before you set off? Uh, whilst training, I would constantly forget to do what's called the brake overcharge. Um, which is something you do after you've completed a brake test, but uh, since I've been driving on my own, there's nothing I'd like to admit to on, in, a public, <laughs> in a public forum. Uh, Jay Callow, play about HUD. Absolutely. I don't need it on. We, we can do this whole route without HUD because we're limited to 45 miles an hour as a Class 7, so it makes it a little bit, uh, little bit simple. Uh, someone, do some fly-past shots. We're just coming up to the Ooze Valley Viaduct. We'll jump out. So the line going down to our right there um, is the Ardingly branch that will take you down to Ardingly Aggregates Terminal and eventually onto the Bluebell Railway at Horsey Kings, which will be very, very lovely. Rowan plays a Class 6 train would be a train um, limited to a maximum speed of 60 miles an hour. So you can have a Class 6 and still only be allowed to travel at about sort of 40 or 45. So it's a maximum speed of 60, subject to any lower restrictions that may apply to that train. Um, yeah, so, so even though it's a class 6, it's a maximum of 60, but it may be, it may be limited to, to slower. Uh, Davidoff, Mod Richard has asked if you can chat to him after the stream. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. So we are coming on to the beautiful Ooze Valley Viaduct as requested. Oh, the buttons are all backwards. <laughs> Beautiful structure. Lovely. So we're just keeping that at 45 there. Luke, how realistic would you say the game is? That's a really good question, Luke. Um, I think the game is very enjoyable and I think the physics are, are suitably well simulated, I would say. There's some things it doesn't do very well, like I don't think low adhesion is simulated particularly well under braking or power conditions. Um, it's yeah, I, I, I would say it's it's okay. It certainly gives you an appreciation for what driving's like, but obviously nothing can replace actually going out there and, and driving. Um, DT trains, make your free cam move fast. You hold down shift. Beautiful. Sergeant Salt, Deborah, can you show us how a real driver would set up a 375? Uh, that's possibly something we can look at doing, yeah. Chronicle Toxic, Richard, what is the longest passenger shift you have done? So when I was driving passenger trains, um, our company agreement was a maximum shift length of 9 hours and 15 minutes. So we're coming round the corner in a minute towards Balkham Station. Trundling along at a lovely 45 miles an hour. A little bit slower than that, actually. Let's get some power in. Lawrence Adams, if you're travelling at 45 miles an hour, how does it affect trains doing 90, e.g. Gatwick Express or the Class 377? So, freight trains will all be timetabled. Um, so, basically, 
we, we, I should imagine when we get up the line in a minute at um, Balkham Tunnel Junction, we're going to be put onto the slow lines. It's quite possibly you're going to be held in loops and places. So quite often you're going to be put out of the way to allow faster trains to pass. But all trains are timetabled, so there will be a pathway available for you to run out of that speed, um, in theory, without delaying anything. Doesn't always work like that, though. The tea drinker, you don't have to deal with Thames Valley Signal Centre being incompetent in Train Sim or Train Sim World. Zero ten, most unrealistic game of the year. I've never had a problem with Thames Valley Signal Centre, I must say, the tea drinker. Um, I think I only drive past two signals that they control coming out of Acton. Uh, well, one going in and one coming out. But, yeah, never, never had a problem with Thames Valley. Knifed by a kangaroo. That is a great username. How hard is it to stop a train at full speed? Uh, not hard at all because I'm basically just going to whack that plunger there and it's going to eventually it's going to stop. Um, it can take, depending on the railhead conditions, it can take some time to stop though. Um, but in actual terms of how hard it is, you just press the button and, and let it stop. Jay Callow, can you explain the pass goods light? Yeah, I certainly can, Jay. So. You can see here we've got pass and we've got goods. And what we're talking about when we say pass and goods is brake timings. So brake timings is how fast or how slow the brakes will apply. So most people think pass is passenger and goods is goods. It, it sort of is, um, but a, passenger tra a goods train can run with passenger or pass brake timings. So on a train fitted with pass brakes, the brakes are gonna apply and release a lot, lot quicker. On a train fitted with goods brakes, the brakes are going to apply and release a lot, lot slower. If you have a little play with the um, turn our cab lock, and if you have a little play with the settings in there and have a look at the brake gauges, you can kind of see the difference um, in the speed that it applies. And the purpose of that is historically, going back years and years and years, trains were were either goods brakes, vacuum. They had goods timed brakes, vacuum brakes, or they were what was called unfitted. So you had rakes and rakes of wagons that had absolutely no brakes on them. So if you can imagine having 10 wagons that have got brakes on them and then 10 wagons with no brakes at the back of the train. If you put your brakes on at the front and your brakes come on really fast and really hard, what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of brake force at the front and all those wagons at the back with no brakes on them are just going to crash into those ones at the front, you know, potentially causing a deroutment and other problems. So the idea of the goods brakes coming on nice and slowly is that the brakes apply slowly and gradually. So rather than these wagons at the back with no brakes on them sort of just hitting it um, up the proverbial, they're sort of going to bunch up nice and slowly and it's going to be much more controlled. Um, some wagons will have on the wagon, it'll have a goods or a pass changeover lever on the wagon so you can change the brake timings on the wagon. And you've also got that on the locomotive so you can swap between um, pass and goods. And there's a whole kind of section on the rule book as to how many wagons you can have in pass timings, how many wagons you can have in goods timings, how the train must be marshalled um, and bits and bobs like that. So generally speaking we always try and drive in, um, we always try and drive in pass timings where we can but there are some wagons on the network which are only fitted with goods timings. Um, so yeah, simple as that. <laughs> I, I made a bit of a hash of explaining that, hopefully you got the general gist. Right, so we're going to have a Balkan Tunnel Junction. Our speed has crept up a little bit, so we're just going to drop a bit of brake in. Uh, knife by a kangaroo. Have I ever had to do emergency stop? Yeah, several times. Um, funnily enough, last week working this exact route. Uh, we're coming up to Free Bridges now. It was just after Free Bridges, which is the next station in game. Um, I had an emergency call on the GSMR radio and had to stop the train. So it does happen now and again. It does happen now and again. So, guys, trying to keep up with your chat. There's 183 of you lovely people in tonight, which is brilliant. Um, as we are not doing very much in the game at the moment. Post your numbers now. For locomotive livery location. Let's have a round of locomotive livery location. My life, uh, ASIC 101. What is a compressor? A uh, compressor is a device. So on trains, we use compressors to compress air. Um, the idea is to compress air. You fill up the air tanks, the main res tanks, the brake pipe um, with compressed air, which then activates all the um, brakes and other things on the train. 
Elisa on a West French level crossing channel. Good evening, welcome. So we are slightly downhill here, so you can see my speed is creeping up, so just drop a little bit of brake in. AWS warning there for the 60 as we come across three bridges. So what I would really like to see on train sim, this we're going past now. If we get an outside shot. We are going past the Siemens Free Bridges Depot for Siemens 700s. In real life, this place is populated with 700s. That is what we want in Train Sim World. We want 700s. We want this depot filled up with 700s. Please, pretty please. <laughs> okay. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. 156 Andrew, you are the third one on my screen with number 10. Going to give you number 10, guys. You have got 10 seconds to give me the locomotive livery and location. Not too much to go on there, but maybe there's enough to go on. Maybe you can get the location from that. Let me know what you think, as always, guys. So we were talking about what happens to faster trains. You didn't see it there because we were playing locomotive location livery. But the um, 387 you can see up in the distance just come racing past us on the fast lines. So yeah, we're currently coasting along, just dropping a little bit of braking as we need it. What do we got? Potato Cure says it's a 319. Um, Noon01 says 375 at Red Hill. Online Detector says Great Western 143. Um, North Check Train Spot thinks it's a 150 at Paddington. GWR 165 at Exeter says DET Trains. Aeronautic says GWR Gatwick. Knifed by a kangaroo. Definitely my favourite username. Says it's um, Southern Rail. Okay, two yellows. We're just coming up to Crawley New Yard on the left hand side. No services in game into Crawley New Yard, which is unfortunate because you could actually add um, you could add more freight if you run services into there, which would be really nice. So our red signal at the moment is um, not immediately outside Gatwick Airport, it is one outside Gatwick Airport. Hey, Jez Davis has become a channel member. Hi, Jez. Welcome to the uh, Dad Round Membership Club. Channel membership starts, ladies and gentlemen, at 99p. You can click on the little membership icon there. Get your little first class ticket next to your name. Right, one yellow is cleared to green. Maintaining that 45. I've got a funny feeling that the timings in Train Sim are not designed for us to be running at 45, so I think we're probably mucking everything up here. I'm on Coca Cola tonight, Coca Cola Zero. That's not product placement. YouTube algorithms, that, that is not product placement. I am not promoting. I promise. Yeah, Davidoff, no worries at all. Jude Official, hello, welcome. Chronicle Toxic, have you ever caused passenger services to be late as a freight driver because something wrong or whatever, and would you get in trouble for it? Uh, it's just one of those things, Chronicle Toxic. If you're out and about and your train breaks down, there's not really a great deal you can do about it. So I, I probably have delayed passenger trains at some point. Um, but passenger trains have also delayed me, so it's it's kind of a an open railway network. We're all kind of trying to get to where we want to be and do it in the best way we can. But you, unfortunately, delays are um, are inevitable sometimes. Emma Wright, you betrayed tea. I don't drink tea. <laughs> I'm hoping you can hear that. It's not very it's not very loud at my end that um, sound effect. Coming in to Gatwick Airport, which is full of 387s. Gatwick is currently being uh, rebuilt at the moment. Speed keeps creeping up. We do start climbing out the other side of Gatwick Airport um, as we go towards Hawley. Ooh, a little bit of lag going on there as well. A lot of lag going on there. Come on. 
Online detected YouTube. I have a spider in my room. I don't have a sound effect for that. Uh, day DT trying to want some tones. Let's run up to Hawley and get a flyby shot. This is where I regret having the safety systems turned on because the um, DSD will knock me out. That's, that's, that's what normally happens in these situations. Here it comes. What we do as well is we get a big chunk of break in and we'll power up. check to see if we've got a tail lamp on the back as well now. No tail lamp on the back! That's terrible. No tail lamp on the back. Due to a train fault, the air has escaped. Someone, have you ever made a mistake as a train driver? Yeah, I think everybody has at some point. Um, at the end of the day, we're only human. We all make mistakes, bud. So, The tea drinker, spooky scary 37s, they break in front of you. Chronicle Toxic, coffee is the best hot drink in the world. Um, the railway runs on coffee and tea, absolutely does. Uh, fatigue is a major, major issue on the railway, so coffee is, coffee is your friend. A train spotter from Berkshire, what is an exhauster on a train? So an exhauster is used to create a vacuum on vacuum braked trains. So basically your, your exhauster creates the vacuum which enables you to release the brakes. So you will only find exhausters fitted on um, vacuum brake trains. Or vacuum brake locomotives. Frash, yeah. Oh, sorry to hear that, Marte. I hope you're okay. Keith Jones and biscuits. Yeah, 100% Keith. Don't forget the biscuits. Emma Wright, have you crashed before? Um, I have crashed the train before, but it wasn't my fault. That's what they all say. Uh, no, 375601. There's a few pictures of it on the internet. I, um, I come around a corner doing 55 miles an hour and there was a big tree in front of me and I went straight into it. Nothing I could have done. Um, didn't get into trouble for it because there's literally nothing I could do. Um, you come around the corner doing 55, you see it, you put the train into emergency, that's that's literally all you can do unfortunately. Someone was asking me about the cab and is there anything in the cab that's not realistic? So, the, in my opinion, the cab is, is pretty realistic, it's pretty well done. The only thing that they've missed out um, is the GSMR radio. So this pedestal now, this is what's called a net, uh, NRN, National Radio Network. This system is completely obsolete now. We've got the new GSMR radio. Check out my video on GSMR radio if you want to know more about that. So they haven't fitted, um, as of 2016, everywhere the whole country was fitted, they haven't put a GSMR radio unit in the Class 66, which would have been nice to see. Um, other than that, the cab is, is pretty decent. There's variations in the um, 66s, so so you've got the standard 66s, the Eurospec 66s. Uh, there's a lot of variation in them anyway. But yeah, they, they, they've made a pretty decent job of the cab. They really have. It's probably a bit clean, if anything. 66 cabs are notoriously dirty. Hey, Southeast Rail Productions has become a member. Great to have you here, bud. Greg, was that Tuesday you had the wreck at Free Bridges? Yes, I believe it would have been Tuesday, Greg. I believe it would have been. So, we've just gone through Salfords. We are coming up to Ellswood. So, when I work this train, um, or this route, it's coming from New Haven, Ellswood is where my day finishes. I get relieved at Ellswood. So a typical day for me on this service, which I will be doing on Mon no, not Monday, sorry, Tuesday. Um, typical day for me on this service will be booking on at Tunbridge at 
at uh, three o'clock in the morning, getting the train ready for departure, 3.49 out of the yard, take the train to Tunbridge, run, uh, sorry, take the train from Tunbridge to Redhill, run the locomotive round, um, all the way down to New Haven, shunt the train around, load it up, have a break, um, then I work the train back to Ellswood, which is our next station stop, um, get in a van and drive back to Tunbridge, which is where my day finishes at about half past one in the afternoon. It's quite a nice little job for us, actually. I quite enjoy the New Haven run. Um, the good thing for us is we run class four to New Haven, so we're allowed to do 75 miles an hour, um, and then class six coming back, so it's 60. So it's, it's considerably quicker than this run that we're having here. Uh, Greg, would you usually put the emergency brake in for a rec call? Yeah, depending on the circumstances, Greg. If I was just like if I was driving a passenger train and just coming into a station, I'd probably stop at that station first. You know, if I'm if I'm literally sort of in the platform about to come to a stand, I'd stop in the right place. Uh, if I'm sort of driving along and I'm in the middle of nowhere, then I'll just whack the emergency plunger on. Um, the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't know. I could be coming around this corner. The emergency could be just around the corner. Up ahead, there could be a tree on the line, so the quicker I stop the train, um, the safer it is. But yeah, sort of, you know, if I'm in a tunnel or something like that, I might sort of think, well, I'm going to slow down and get out the tunnel before I stop. So very, very much depends on circumstances, really. Right, power off one yellow. Our oh, red is just before Red Hill. We're going up the slows, which is really quite nice. James Harrison, when you finish your work shift, why don't you get the train home? The reason is, James, the driver that relieves me, book, we, we book on and off at our home depot, so our, my home depot's Tunbridge. The driver that relieves me books on at Tunbridge, jumps in one of our fleet vans, brings it to Ellsworth, takes the train over, and I take the van back. So we could use the train, but by using the train, you're going to add time into the diagram. So... For example, the trains from Tunbridge to Redhill run one an hour, so they're either going to have to book me on very early, book the driver on very early to get over and get down to Ellswood in order to pick this train up, um, which then obviously you've got limits on your driving hours, you can only have a maximum 12 hour shift and bits and bobs like that, so it's normally sort of more viable just to, just to take a van. So we are red ahead. Raygun, I've not seen any 66s with, uh, with NRN fitted. Not to say that they don't, but I haven't seen any myself um, that have got 66 fitted to them. Uh, Evan Dixon, what's your favourite train excluding the 66? Favourite one that I drive is most definitely the Class 73. Really enjoy driving those. Hey, Nick Kay and Pig and Bob have joined the Dad Rail Club. The Dad Rail Membership Club. Great to have you. Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it. Oh, come on. That's cruel. That's cruel. Typical signal, as that is. It's raining members. Brilliant. Yeah, really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. I really, genuinely, really do appreciate it. So we have got 191 of you lovely people in tonight, which I think is a record for a Dad Rouse stream, which is brilliant. So if you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. That would be um, absolutely brilliant. Just like Joe Peters done. Thank you very much. So coming through Red Hill, the line that you can see going around to our right is the Surrey Hills or North Downs line that takes you to Rygate, Guildford and then on to Reading and the line to our left round there takes you over to Edenbridge and eventually down to Tunbridge. To Tall Tyler, hello from an American passenger train conductor. Ah, brilliant, hello. Now when you say conductor, because we, um, we have different words in the UK, do you mean conductor as in we mean conductor, like the person who works on the back of the train waving flags, blowing whistles and looking after the passengers? Or do you mean conductor as in a driver? Train driver Sam, red to green at Red Hill, pretty standard. Yeah, you know it, Sam. Not normally if you're going through the through road. If you're through the through road, you normally go all the way through. But if you're going into a platform there, it's approach 
a, a, a approach control that doesn't exist. So the substation on our left is called Thorpe Lane Substation. No, it's not called Thorpe Lane. What am I talking about? Is it called Thorpe Lane? It might be called Thorpe Lane. I can't remember. Holmthorpe or Holmwood or something. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a long time. Right, we're coming around to Merstham anyway. I know that much. So we've not had any opportunity to use our train length count yet. I don't, unless we get a temporary speed or an emergency speed, I don't think we're going to get an opportunity to use it. Yeah, if you were going through the middle, Sam, something's gone seriously wrong. Yeah, Richard, the train spot or more. I already said that'd be all right, bud. We can uh, we can jump in a Discord call afterwards. DET trains. I would become a member, but the join button isn't it? Oh, that's interesting. Liam Oldcroft, new subscriber. Welcome to Dad Row. Great to have you here. So, guys. Post your numbers now for locomotive delivery location. Nafe. Welcome to Dad Row. Uh, Irish... Carcoon, welcome to Dad Round, new subscriber. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to turn notifications off in a minute. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Really really great to have so many of you here. Uh, Irish Irish 66 fan, welcome to Dad Round, new subscriber. Oh, it's just... I think it's just catching up because I, I had them turned off. I've just turned them back on. Scouse God on COD. Oh, that's got to be one of my favourite usernames. Scouse God on COD. Right, what have we got? Someone, you are the third one on my screen with number 12. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay, guys, let's give you box number 12. You've got 10 seconds to tell me the locomotive livery and location. Quite a flat cap. Is that a flat cap, that one? So we are coming into Merstham Tunnel, which takes us through the South Downs. Takes us through the North Downs, my apologies. And we're just going to shut off the power there because we're starting to, speed starting to creep up a little bit. Knifed by a kangaroo. How did you find out you passed your train training to become a train driver? Oh, you, just get, you just get told when you do the assessment that you've passed or you failed. It's pretty much the same as your driving test, really. Uh, what have we got? It's just, it's just Esh. What well, class? One fifty. Aeronautics. GWR Sprinter. Rowan plays. One fifty. Trains from Berkshire. One fifty at St Exeter St David. Supertram. One fifty. GWR. DT Trains. One fifty. Dan Dillinger Belcher. GWR. Richard the Train Spotter. More. One fifty. GWR. Lots and lots of love for GWR 150. Lawrence Adams thinks it's maybe a pacer. Ah. Train driver Sam, stay safe out there, bud. Thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy 2 Papa 75. All the way to Paddington. We should track you on real time trains now. We should get that on the screen. We should like track train driver Sam on real time trains. Matthew Rice, cab light is on. I don't like driving in the dark. I get scared. Jay Callow, home and thought. That's the one. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> I knew it was something like that. I knew it was something like that. Is that what I said? Did I say home and thought first or did I say Fort Plain? Fort Plain's a level crossing um, between Staines and Egham. Dynamic weather working nicely now. Um, the lighting looks absolutely broken at this point unless we're going to see a rainbow no that looks very broken and of course with the 66 we still don't have any um, any splash effect on the windscreen so there's still quite a lot wrong with the 66 hopefully they're going to get a bit more work done on it so is that going to go dark as we go through sort of 
a little bit weird. It's a little bit funky. Don't forget, guys. Brighton Mainline is a um, Brighton Mainline is a Train Sim World Two route. So obviously, I'm playing this on Train Sim World Three, so you get some of the features, such as the dynamic weather, um, are implemented, but some of the new lighting effects and stuff are not. So it's probably why it looks a little bit funky. That is very broken. Yeah. Drinker, do you not get window glare from the cab light glare? Um, why was they told to not to use the light when driving during my London underground days? Yeah, generally speaking, driving at night, we don't have the cab light on. Um, I don't normally, to be fair, driving through tunnels. I just put it on for the stream. I'm hoping this is going to kind of fix itself in a minute because it's looking, it's looking pretty bad. Hoping the, the lighting is going to do something. Let's see if we jump outside and back in. Nope, it's not fixing it. Okay, guys, let's have a quick look in our lovely Discord server and see what you have been posting over there. Joshua R, the Bristolian, beautiful, and a Phoenix thirty-seven with a three seven three seven five six zero one. That's the one I smashed up. Thanks, Fat Frank. Brilliant. If you want to join our very friendly Discord community, ladies and gentlemen, you're more than welcome to do. There is a link in the description below. Click on there. And if you want to post your pictures, you can do. We are in the live stream pictures page. Get your pictures in there. Coming through Causton South. A bit close to the edge, that chappy there. I'm hoping the weather's going to change and the lighting in the cab's going to sort itself out because, yeah, that does not look good at all. Yeah, it's not the cab light. Cab light off. Definitely not the cab light. Maxwell, do you ever fly on Vatsim? Yeah, I do. Uh, I'm not very brave on Vatsim. I always do general aviation and kind of fly where no one's watching. <laughs> Boeing 82, do you have a red light to retain night vision? No, we don't. That's that's quite an interesting concept. Lawrence Adams, yeah, we are allowed to wear sunglasses, but they've got to be non-polarized sunglasses, um, so they don't alter color. DT trains, you crashed. Your crashed train is in the Discord photo. Yeah, it is indeed. Bit of a retro feel with the lighting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It looks looks really washed out and awful now. Not sure what's going on with it. We'll persevere. We'll carry on. So we're just coming up to... Well, we're going across Stokes Nest Junction now. Um, the train to our left is on the Tattenham Corner Branch. It's just left uh, Reedham Station. I don't know if you can see... Uh, I don't know if we can see Reedham Station up there. Yeah, Reedham Station just round there and Coulson Town and Tattenham um, just down that way. So we are coming up to Purley and this gives me an opportunity to explain something that is very hard to explain. So when we get to Purley I'll try and explain what I've got to explain. Hey Shia Sali, welcome to Dead Ralph. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but welcome all the same. Great to have you here. Okay, so as we come around to Purley, the line speed drops to 45. It uh, drops to 60, sorry. That is completely and utterly wrong. That 80 board is wrong. The line speed drops to 60. I believe the HUD will say, yeah, the, the um, speed board is completely wrong. Because if we look at the uh, heads-up display there, it's showing us 60. Even though, even though the board said 80, so the board is wrong. I was right, it is 60. Now, you remember me saying that our maximum line speed, our maximum speed of this train was 45. Now, the maximum speed of the train is 45, because we're a class 7, and the line speed is 60 at this point. But I am only allowed to drive my train at 40 miles an hour. And there's a reason for that. In the what's known as the Network Rail Southern region, so that's Kent, Sussex and Wessex, there is something called the two-thirds rule. Now this only applies in Kent, Sussex and Wessex. Something called the two-thirds rule 
that applies to class 6, 7 and 8 trains. So we're a class 7 train so we are bound by that. And the two thirds rule tells us that we can only drive our train at two thirds of the maximum line speed for that section of track. So all the way from Brighton up to Gatwick and up to Purley, the maximum line speed is 90. So we can drive at two thirds of 90, um, which would be 60. Obviously we're only allowed to do 45. Um, subject to any lower restrictions of course, so, so two thirds of 90 would be 60. However when we get to Purley, the next section of our journey from Purley to East Croydon, the maximum line speed is 60. So we can only do two thirds of that which is 40 miles an hour, so we are limited to 40 miles an hour. So it's, if we was to now come across a, if the speed limit was to now drop to, drop to say 50, we wouldn't need to do two thirds of 50, we could carry on doing 40. We only need to do two thirds of the maximum line speed. Now if that's confused you, don't worry about it, because I have trainee drivers that come out with me who are also confused by it. And I explain it a lot better than that with diagrams and bits of paper. So if you are confused by that, don't panic. But basically in the Network Rail Southern region, you're only permitted to travel at two, if you've got a class six, seven or eight train, you can only travel at two thirds of the maximum permitted line speed, subject to any lower restrictions. There we go. <laughs> Jeez, Davis, our goods carried better behaved than passengers. There, freight, freight doesn't moan, Jeez. Um, Jez, sorry, freight doesn't moan. Um, what someone did say to me the other day, they said, uh, they, they described passengers as self-loading freight. I thought, oh, that's, that's self-loading freight. I like that. Uh, Liam Oldcroft, why can I upload a photo in Discord? Do you mean, why can't you upload, bud? It could be because you're listed in Discord as a new member and you're, you haven't got the passenger role yet. Um, I should be able to sort that out for you, but not while I'm streaming, unfortunately. So coming into South Croydon, the lines round to our left there that you can see, that takes you down to um, Sandersted, Riddlesdown, Waldingham, Upper Waldingham, Oxted, Hurst Green, where the line splits and you can go down towards um, Lingfield, Dormans, East Grinstead, or you can go, I should know where that goes, I sign it, <laughs> you can go Hurst Green, Edenbridge Town, Hever, Cowden, Ashurst, Eridge, Crowborough, Buxted and Uckfield. But we're not doing that, we're going to East Croydon. Keith Jones, are you taking a break in October, Richard? Keith, I will be going on holiday in October. I've got ten days in um, Portugal in October. First time I've been a first time I've been there since the pandemic. Uh, my wife, as most of you know, my wife is Portuguese. Um, so going to visit my mother in law. Andrew Neil, welcome to Dadra, our new subscriber. Great to have you here. The train will get Croydonized for Railways of Cornwall. Love it. So yeah, like I was saying about the two thirds rule, the line speed at the moment is 45 all the way through Croydon. If I put the heads up display. So we don't need to do two thirds of 45. We only need to do two thirds of the maximum. Oh, the cab lighting may have fixed itself. I think I think the cab lighting has fixed itself. Is it? No, it's brightening up again. No. Stay like that. Stay like that. No, it's having none of it. We are we are destined to have an an overexposed cab. Dad, Rao, put on the HUD. You need to know where to stop. Uh, we are we are stopping at red signals only. Red signals only for this service. So we are now approaching Windmill Bridge Junction. I do actually need to slow down because there's a differential 35 coming up. So you can see here we've got a differential speed board. 30, I'm sure it's 35 in real life. <laughs> right, let's slow down. So the uh, lower speed on that, the 30 applies to us and the higher speed would apply to passenger trains. This is quite a steep uphill gradient here as well, so we want to sort of get some power in just to pull the train up. If you've got a really heavy train on it, it's quite difficult. We're going over Cottage Bridge Junction now. 
So the line down to your um, right that's branching off there takes you down to Norwood um, and then up through Forest Hill to London Bridge. Round the corner into Sellers, we're still 30 miles an hour. That's saying we're 40, we are 30. Of course it doesn't have it does it doesn't work with the differential speeds, does it? So it, it kind of just thinks we're a passenger train. Um, the HUD the HUD on the game doesn't kind of recognise that we have to travel at the lower speeds. And we're coming down through Selhurst. Trains from Berkshire, yeah, 45 maximum speed through East Croydon. Um, all lines through East Croydon are 45 except Platform 1, which has a 30 uh, just as you go into it. Uh, all crossovers at East Croydon are 25. Quite an easy place to learn, actually. So we're going up, back up to 60, so our maximum speed is 40, and we're going to drop downhill quite steeply down towards Wandsworth. Uh, Kirkwood 182, what jobs can you get to get your foot in the door to become a train driver? So basically you want to look for any job within the railway industry, that, uh, sort of any comp... Let me, let me start that again. <laughs> look for a company that employs train drivers. So look at um, South East and Southern, Gatwick Express, Thameslink, Great Northern, um, Avanti West Coast if they're still a thing. And then look at what other jobs they offer. So look at stuff like... Um, on-train hosts, on-train managers, um, conductors, shunters, platform staff. Basically, any job you can get, any job you can get with a train operating company, would be good for you to get your foot in the door. If you want to work for freight, then have a look at the freight companies: GB Rail Freight, um, DB Schenker, Freightliner, um, Colas, DRS, um, and sort of look for shunters jobs or rail operators jobs. Basically, once you've got your foot in the door on the industry, it's quite, it's easier to get a driver's job and progress once you've got your foot in the door, that's for sure. So we're chugging along through Thornton Heath, heading up towards Norbury. A little bit of a climb up to Norbury. LWO, hi Darrow, so I'm late, I've just finished my stream, I lost a few of my... Oh, sorry about that, bud. Not, not intentional. My dashboard is fixed! It does look a bit better, yeah. Um, Aeronautics 237, Avanti West Coast, if that's still a thing, love it. <laughs> Are they still a thing? Oh dear, I oh do. Matthew Rice, Richard, are you allowed to turn the engine on if it cuts out speed? Yeah, you could absolutely do that, Matthew. Um, I've never had that on a 66, I've never had the engine cut out on me, but if, it, if you were driving along and it cut out, you could press the engine start on the move. Um, that wouldn't be a problem at all. So we're keeping that around 40. Let's drop a little bit of brake in there. Two yellows. Yes, they are still a thing. Uh, knifed by a kangaroo. Do you get fines if you forget your PPE on the job? Uh, no. No, if you forget your PPE, you're possibly going to be in quite a lot of trouble, but I don't think you, you're not going to get fined. I've never heard of that. Um, if you turn up at a site and you've not got your PPE, sometimes they won't let you in, they just send you home. Um, then depending on your company, you might not get paid for the day. It just depends, it depends purely on your individual company. Two yellows. So I've dropped the speed down to 30. Uh, what we don't want to be doing is running towards red signals. So we always walk towards a red, never run towards a red. So if we're running on the yellows, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow the train down, let the train take the strain, and wait until the signals start clearing. Nightcrit F1, welcome to Dad Rowney subscriber. Fantastic. And we have got 202 of you lovely people in tonight. That is an absolute record. I, I don't think I've ever had this many people in a stream. So of course, guys, do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be awesome. South East Rail Productions, it's West Coast Railways now. Yeah, I see that West Coast are kind of doing a intercity service on a Friday. That's really good. I quite fancy having a go on that myself. I've never, little confession, I've never been on a rail tour. Um, yeah, I, I, sh I should probably do that at some point. I really should. 
Emma Wright, Richard, have you ever been through a temporary speed restriction? Every day, Emma. Uh, on the real railway, for example, on the line we've just driven up from um, Withersfield up to Gatwick Airport, there's about three in that, that sort of uh, little bit of route. So yeah, all the time, every day. We are coming through. This is Streatham Common at the moment. So the lines up to your right will take you up to um, Streatham. That's Streatham Common we just come through. Lines to your right take you up to Streatham, um, then up to Tulse Hill. The line going across the top of us will take you down towards uh, Mitcham Junction, then eventually down to Sutton. You can also turn off of that line, it's just gone above us, and head down towards Tooting, Haydens Road and Wimbledon via the, uh, what's known as the Wall of Death, which is a horrible route to drive. Hey, Alert, Basher79, Kieran McBride, John T1512, and Holt Simulations, welcome to DadRail, new subscribers, great to have you here, guys. Right, so we are good for 40. And while we're chugging along, should we do a should we do a locomotive location livery? So guys, as we've got lots of new viewers in tonight, we're going to play locomotive location livery. I'm going to play a jingle, and then you need to post a number in the chat between 1 and 25. So when you hear the jingle, post your number. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. Between 1 and 25, and I'm going to pick the third one that comes up on my screen. Rowan plays! Pardon me. <laughs> Two yellows. Okay. Nearly missed it then. Rowan plays. You are the third one on my screen with number eight. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay, guys. So if you've not seen this before, here's how it works. I'm going to reveal what's behind box number eight. You've got 10 seconds to tell me the locomotive, livery, and location of the picture beneath. Here we go, Rowan plays number eight. I promise I'm not nearly having a spad while you do that as well. Any faults? Any faults? Just gone past one yellow, red ahead. Um, we're going heading towards Ballon, we're going uphill. There's a red ahead, come on. That's really bad. No, don't spad. Come on, stop. It should be... Oh, there's, there is actually a train ahead of us as well. It should be 10 mile an hour over the AWS magnet, and we went over it doing about 25, which is really, really bad. That's very, very bad driving. Very bad driving. Very bad, very bad, very bad. I, I just wanted an excuse to play tea and biscuits for the manager. We stopped. We stopped, so we got away with it. That's the main thing. So when we stop at a red signal on a freight train, we don't have a DRA, driver reminder appliance. So what we want to do is put the straight air brake full on. That's come off to one yellow. We're going to take... Uh, because we're on a bit of a gradient here... So if I release the train brake, that train's going to start rolling back. Because we're on a bit of a gradient... We're going to take our train brake off whilst leaving our direct brake straight air on. Give it a couple of notches of power. Wait for the ammeter to come up. And then release the direct brake. And hopefully that's going to start pulling forward. Just like that. Lovely and smooth. And we can give that a little bit more power on two yellows. So, what are we thinking? It's Just Dash 150. DT Trains, GWR 150 Exeter. Pig and Bob says, Great Western Railway 150 Exeter St. David's. Andrew Lonsbury says, SD42 in Norfolk Southern livery at Runnock Yard. I think you're a, you're a bit off there, bud. Uh, Nate... Cotilla, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. You're new. Hello, welcome. Great to have you here. 
Liam Oldcroft, at least you stopped a loco length short. Yeah, I, got, I definitely got away with that. Definitely got away with that. Crazy Dash, I'm good. How are you? Andrew Lonsbury, when I get pulled to the manager, I don't get any treats, just get a talking to. That's that's probably the, the reality of the situation, isn't it? Oh dear, oh dear. Right, one yellow. Let's have a little look in the Discord server, see what you lovely people have been posting over there. Fat Frank has got 70 frees on a rail tour. Um, at Clapham Junction, platform 17, that is just where we're approaching at the moment as it goes. And a smacks rad is, is posting air charts. If you want to join our Discord community, guys, there is an invitation link in the description below. We are a very friendly community. Uh, we talk about railways, transport in general, aviation, all those sorts of bits and bobs. You're more than welcome to um, hop over there and to join us. We are coming down to one yellow. We are almost at the end of this run. Let me know what you want to do. Cause we've only been going for... We've only been going for about an hour. Um, I'm happy to do another run. Let me know what you want to do. So we can stick to the 66 and do um, maybe the southeastern high speed, a 66 run on there. Or we can jump into the javelin on 375 this route or another. Do let me know uh, Do let me know what you fancy doing, guys. I'm very open to your suggestions, as always. Uh, Lewis, hello. Welcome. Nate, oh my god, you said my name correctly. You're the first YouTuber who did it. Excellent. I bet I've just said it wrong there, didn't I? Southeast Rail Productions wants a 66. Two yellows at Wandsworth. Uh, Wandsworth Common, we're at now. There are three Wandsworths next to Clapham Junction Wandsworth Common on the southern, Wandsworth Road on the southeastern, and Wandsworth Town on the southwestern. I used to get Wandsworth Town and Wandsworth Road mixed up and my instructor come up with a genius way of remembering this. When you drive through Wandsworth Town there is a McDonald's next to Wandsworth Town. And what you have to remember is there is always a McDonald's in town. So if you remember there's always a McDonald's in town you'll never forget Wandsworth Town. Two yellows crawling along nicely. South East Rail Productions 313. Carmen A66 South. Oh, someone ICE1. Little bit of division there as to what what people. Train Simulator Classic 66. No, we're not going to touch that one. Uh, we're going to stay in Train Sim World 3. I say drive the javelin. Do an American route next. Uh, we won't do an American route on the... I, I do really need to do some more American stuff. Uh, we won't be doing that on this stream, but we can certainly do that on a future one. Two yellow. So our next signal, we want junction indicator position four, um, which will take us into platform 16, which is a 21 hour crossover, which is where we get relief. This is inaccurate as well, because the signal we are going up to is approach controlled, so it will remain red until we get close to it. Liam Oldcroft has become a member. Thank you very much, Liam. Great to have you. Actually do Trans Pennine Express 47. Uh, someone, I just want a passenger run. 66 South East and High Speed 395. So there we go. One yellow and a position 4 route indicator. It's going to take us into platform 16. It's going to take us on to the down West London line. So if we were to carry on, which unfortunately we can't, um, we would go round to uh, Imperial Wharf, West Brompton, Kensington Olympia, Shepherd's Bush, um, and then onto the either up to Wilsdon High Level or onto the Southwestern Main Line. So one yellow, red is at the end of the platform. Drive a German freight. TPE freight. Ah, uh, <laughs> no worries, Liam. We did uh, we did shout you out, bud. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the membership. Thank you for joining. So 
So, platform 16, Clapham Junction doesn't actually look particularly good on here, if I'm being honest. We are red ahead. We want to. I'm doing this properly now. I'm slowing down 10 miles an hour for the um, AWS magnet. Supertram 395, please. Javelin, a good shout. Do you know what? I've not done a 395 into Ashford yet, so I'm, I might do. We might have a 395 run down the high speed. Red right ahead. Let's see. Wants me to stop all the way up there. Crazy Dash, what are free trains you want to see the most in Train Sim World 3? I want to see a 700. Um, I would like to see... I would like to see a Class 73, but I don't ever think we're going to get one. That would be really nice, but I don't ever think we're going to get one. And... Continental-wise... I'd, I would see this is going to be really, really. Uh, it's never ever going to happen because I don't think there's the market for it. But I would love to see some Portuguese routes, and the series 1400 would be absolutely epic. Wavy sounds. Hello, new subscriber. Great to have you here. Yeah, that would be absolutely uh, brilliant. I'd really, really like to see that. Um, okay, right. Main menu. That wasn't too bad a run. Oh yes, definitely the 700. So many services. For Brighton Mainline South East and High Speed. Charlie Buxton, what do you miss most about passenger driving? Uh, I miss the passengers, to be honest with you, Charlie. Um, some of them were a bit awkward, but most of them were quite friendly and it was someone to talk to. I used to like doing announcements and the customer service bit and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I, I do miss passengers now and again. So we'll, I want to do a Train Sim World free route because it does look pretty. So we'll jump into South East and High Speed. What locos does it give me a choice of? So I can't use the 47 or the 37 on here. So do we do a 395 run? Should we do... I might do a networker. Did anyone want a networker? Um, baked potato. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to keep nagging you, but have you asked about Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway and Train Simulator 2 free? I absolutely have. I, have. I have put the suggestion out there and it was... It was. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it was quite a positive response. Um, but I, I have put it. I have put it out there. Um, do the three nine five steam two for three nine five. Yes, three nine five, four six five, three nine five, one six five. Everyone's just saying yes. Do creators club networker networker. Oh dear, I, I kind of feel like. Do you know what, guys? Do you know what? Pig, Pig and Bob there using a first class ticket and a driver's key. Charity Javelin. Oh, that's that's a shout. Right, we're gonna we're gonna do, we're gonna do a Gravesend to Dartford in the networker. And then we'll do a St Pancras to Ashford in the 395. And then we'll call it a night because um I'm off I'm off to Legoland tomorrow with the kids. Um which is my my company are, are doing kind of a um, like corporate day out type thing, um, so they're they're taking us to Legoland for the day, which is quite nice. Um, da, 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 what do we want? Ramsgate to Dartford. Drive this service from that's an hour long. I don't really want to do an hour long on that service. Um, let's type in Gravesend. Gravesend to London Charing Cross, 9.33, 16 minutes. Um, I think that should be okay. Should we do something kind of... Let's go a bit earlier in the morning, see if we can get a nice sunrise in. 6.48 in the morning, that should be about right. Gravesend to London Charing Cross, let's load that up. And then we'll do a 3.95 run as well. Why it's loading, I'm going to make 20p and play an advert. Well, hey... I know they're annoying, but 20p. Stephen Wilson says there is a sub in the river at Strood. There is indeed. That is actually a um, Russian Cold War submarine flying a Ukrainian flag. Good luck to them. Good luck to them. Ah, that's a bit too daylighty, that, isn't it? So that's 648. Let's... 
Let's try going a little bit earlier than that. Uh, to the trains, train depot, timetable, 465. Southeastern high speed. I'm not a particular fan of the new uh, UI, if I'm being completely honest. So let's go. Gravesend to London, Cannon Street, 611. That's 14 minutes. Gravesend to London, Charing. Yeah. Oh, London. Oh, so that would be from Dartford to Gravesend. That'll do. We can do it that way around. 6.07 in the morning. Let's try that one. Yeah, British Film Guy, we will do the... We'll do a 395 run. We'll do a St Pancras down to Ashford. Uh, 395 run once we've done this. So we'll go a 15 minute run on the 465. Boeing 82, what's your favourite time of day to drive? Early morning? Yeah, I think sunset and sunrise are definitely the most picturesque times to drive. Ah, yeah, this is better. This looks pretty. It's a little bit too light, but we'll we'll roll with it. We'll roll with it. Okay, let's remember how to get the networker set up. So, I used to drive these as a shunt driver. Never as a mainline driver, though. Uh, let's get all of our safety systems in. Key in. Uh, doors on the right. So if we're being a good boy, we're getting out, out the chair. Pressing the button over there. Um, da -da 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 -da, what else have I got to do? Lights, 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 people, lights, people. Day running, tail lights off. And of course, aux heat and lighting on for the passengers. Or the self-loading freight, if you want to call them that. They don't like it when you call them that. And let's check where we are stopping. So we are Stone Crossing, Greenhive, Swanscombe, Northfleet, and Gravesend. So we are all stations, basically. The train, the train now standing, standing at platform, platform 4 is the 0609 Southeastern South service to Gravesend. This, this train, train will be calling, calling at Stone Crossing, Crossing Greenhive, Greenhive, Swanscombe, Northfleet, and Gravesend. Anyone, Anyone with think I was a professional? Oh, oh Southeast, Southeast Rail, Rail Productions. Productions, we, we need, need a class 92 for HS1. HS1. We, we absolutely, absolutely do. We absolutely do. Uh, regen break, says Maxwell. Could you use the speed control? The, I'll be honest with you, in real life, the speed set on 465 does not work and is not used. Uh, so for that reason, we won't use it. So our DRA is off, which is good. Come on. Closed doors. Steve Wilson, if only all freight was self-loading. Excellent. Right, into forward. I signed this route in real life as well, so no excuses. Should be able to do it about the HUD. 20 leaving Dartford. Um, race site one, what train have you ever what train have you ever been in with the fastest acceleration? So I believe the 465 that we're driving now, I believe this is the fastest accelerating DC train in the UK. Um, otherwise it's probably going to have to be something like... I don't know, because if you're in like a class 73 electric locomotive, they accelerate so fast it's unreal. When you're light engine that is. Right, how many carriages have we got on? I didn't check that. Uh, we are... We are an eight car. All stations. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. <laughs> Andrew Lonsbury, not accurate enough. You have to shove the mic in your mouth and talk. It does really sound like that, doesn't it, sometimes? Right, let's get her up to 50. Dan H, all freight is self-loading to drivers. Baked potato, um, I believe it's about 30 quid, depending on what package you go for. But I'm not 100% sure on that. So we're up to 50 for the minute. It'll be up to 60 once we get around the corner, or 70 even. Um, what have we got locomotive location livery-wise? Emma Wright, you're the third one on my screen with number nine. 
Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Okay, guys, so good choice. I'm going to give you box number nine. You've got 10 seconds to tell me the locomotive livery and location. Whoa, it's, what's that I see there? That red and white thing. Is that a bit of a giveaway? Does that help with your location? Good call, that one, I reckon. Row and place, how long does it take to learn a route? That is entirely dependent on the route, Rowan. So if you've got a really simple route, it could just be one or two trips over it. If you've got a longer route, it could be a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. It, yeah, it's really all dependent on how complicated the route is and how long it is. A little bit early on the brakes for stone crossing there. I must remember the networkers do have pretty good brakes. Um, baked potato says Truro. Uh, potato cure is still going with St. David's. Um, trains with Lewis 2022. Exeter. David Donnell, new subscriber. Welcome to Dead Rail. Stu, hi Richard. Hope you're well. I saw the cold start video. Thank you very much, Stu. Very much appreciated, bud. I'm going way too, way too light on the brakes. You can tell I've just been driving the 66, can't you? The lighting does really look gorgeous, though. <laughs> and that's where I overrun the station after saying I was going really light on the brakes. Mark Skelporn, Skeplorn. The pick looks like Truro. Oh, using break step free. It's never good. Right, we are all stopped. We do our free step check. We are eight cars. We are on the S car mark and platform is on the left hand side. Looking good. Yeah, thanks very much, Stu. Really appreciate that. I um I got the notification before it came up on the screen. I really do appreciate that, bud. Uh, Dan H, Exeter is all colour light signals. Oh, okay, so maybe not Exeter then. Uh, Andrew Lonsbury, they need to merge the East Coastway line and the Brighton Main line since they are in the same area. Yeah, I 100% agree. It'd be really nice to have the Lewis, um, Lewis to Withersfield cord included. I, I completely support that. Um, you can't get the timetable up unless you've got the HUD up, which is really annoying. Uh, lock doors, we're good to go. November Kilo 413, green. Off to Green Hive, just around the corner. Green Hive for Blue Water if you fancy a bit of shopping. Just up here on the left, there is a Burger King. <laughs> it's a running theme in the streams. I know where all the takeaways are, all the fast food restaurants. Fat Richard, it's to be expected. Um, yeah, just over there. Hey, Steve Pope, welcome to Denver, only subscriber. Maxwell Wind Shepherd, Train Sim World 4, a full open network gate. Ah, oh, Max. Something you want to tell us. Something, something, something you know that we don't. Right, let's start coasting. We're just around the corner into Greenhive. We are uphill into Greenhive, so the gradient's going to help us a little bit. See if we can not over brake this time. Trying really hard not to over brake. Hey, that's a much better stop. I'll take that. Oh, maybe. That, that was looking good. Buggered it up at the last minute. Never mind. And we want to be putting the monitors in the drop light because we are a driver-only operated service. Perfect, we'll take that. We are an eight car train. We're on the eight car mark. Platform's on the left. This is quite an interesting signal um, situated on the offside. That is as it is in real life as well. That signal is on the offside. Um, it's a bit of, bit of a, an oddity, bit of an oddity. Same Richard, I love my food. 
Stu, you are far too generous. Fat Richard, is that the Thomas the Tank Engine character? Does he replace the fat controller? Brilliant. You, you are far too generous, Stu. Thank you very much. Locked doors. We're running late. I mean, we are southeastern, but all views and opinions are my own. Right, we're off. Next stop will be Swanscombe. Far too generous, G. Far too generous. Jamie Dexter, please say hello to Chelsea. She loves your videos and trains. Hello, Chelsea. The Fat Richard. We do have our, um, for those of you that are in the Discord server, we our, our bot in the Discord server is known as the Fat Controller. Um, if you're not in the Discord server, why not? Head over and join. It'd be great to have you there. Chronicle Toxic, has there been any time where they call you and ask if you could drive a passenger service because the driver is calling sick and they've got no one else? Is that likely to happen? Um, not, no, not really, because I work for a company that only operates freight trains. So it's, it's not likely that it's ever going to happen because it's quite weird in the UK. If you work for a particular company, you'll normally only drive trains for that company. There are some exceptions sometimes. Um, they sort of companies do cross cover each other's work, but yeah, gem generally speaking, that's not really going to happen. Andrew Lonsbury, what are your thoughts on Dovetail attacking Eurostar by putting the TGV train in the new southeastern high speed? I think we need a Eurostar in there. We need like a, just we've got some Pancras. We've got some Pancras to the to uh, Ashford. We sort of have the, down to the tunnel, maybe through the tunnel. Dovetail like doing routes with tunnels, as seen in the um, the German add-on route, which I can never pronounce. Köln, yeah, I'm not even going to try it. Um, so there's our eight car mark. However, we're driver only operated, so we need to be on the monitors. So I'm sure there should be monitors on that eight car mark. Eight on the eight, doors on the left. Steve Wilson, I'm starting the 465516 Slade Green Depot to Strood. Um, see the sub on Train Simul 3 now. Right now on Xbox, brilliant. Crazy Dash, 90s technology is superb. Do you know what it really is? It really is, isn't it? Southeast Rail Productions, London to Lille would be great. Oh, Eurostar won't let them. Oh, okay, Andrew. That's, that's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Um, I'm going to guess we're ready to go. Not much station dwell time on this. Go! Next station on this service will be Norfleet. Jamie Dexter, thank you. Do you find it sad that your sons don't like enjoy trains as much as you? No, not at all, Jamie. We, we have other interests in common and other things that we do together. So it's they, they've got their thing, I've got my thing. Um, my youngest son is showing quite an interest, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, no, it's, you know, they're, they're their own people. It's absolutely fine. We, we've, got, we've got things that we enjoy in common, so it's, uh, it's nice. Coming down towards Northfleet. Better get some braking, really. Emma, do you know what? I've never been on a Eurostar. Um, I've been through the tunnel on Le Châtel, but I've never been on a Eurostar. Um, I would very, very much like to drive trains through the tunnel. And although it's not something that's on my radar right at this very second, um, learning French and driving freight trains through the tunnel is something that possibly may happen or could happen in the future. It's Look, there's no monitors here either, so I don't know where we're supposed to stop. Um, it's something that possibly may happen or could happen in the future. It's it, not the immediate future, it's not on my radar at the moment, but it's it's something that in the future there is the potential for me to have the opportunity to do, if that makes sense. Uh, 
Uh, Trainswap from Berkshire would like to play another round of locomotive location livery. Why not? Post your numbers now for we can locomotive do livery location. There is no station dwell time. Not even time for the driver to have a drink. Although, to be fair, in reality, at 6.21 in the morning, as we are here, um, the driver would be drinking coffee. I can almost guarantee you that as a fact. Right, we've got a green. We're off to Gravesend. Um, it's just Esh. You are the third one on my screen. You have chosen number 23. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. We are going to give you number 23. You've got 10 seconds to tell me the locomotive livery and location of the picture underneath. Well, we've got a bit of platform there, ladies and gentlemen. Are you an expert on identifying platforms? It's got a white line. It's got a yellow line. Has it got, has it got peripheral paving? Southeast Rail Productions, you'd have to change company to drive through the tunnel, wouldn't you? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, my company do operate some trains through the tunnel, so no, that would not, not be necessary at all. Uh, VM North, check train spotting, GWR 150 Truro. Potato Cure, GWR 150 Truro. Rowan Plays, GWR 150 Truro. Emma Wright, Class 150 GWR Red Roof, GWR 150 Truro. Potato Cure, just because of the signal, okay. Two yellows. Two yellows. Better get some braking as if it's two yellows. Um, Maxwell thinks it's a 150 at Newbury. GWDT train is 150 par or Truro. Could be either either. Dan H, 92s. <laughs> That's the ones, Dan. Temperamental, but... Uh, but nice. Right, one yellow, red ahead. Let's get some brakes in. So heading towards a red signal, we want to be aiming to do no more than 20 over the AWS magnet. We're actually going to do something a little bit naughty here. I'm told that TPWS is simulated properly in Train Sim World 3. We're going to test that theory. Um, I'm not going to slow down coming towards this signal. I'm going to see if the overspeed takes me out. Uh, the overspeed did not take me out. I don't want to spad now. Come on. So it could have been that we weren't going fast enough, but the overspeed towards the signal didn't take me out. Uh, we're going to try it going into the station platform. So go, if we get into platform zero, which we should do, the TPWS loop should be set for... Hey, has it... How does that work? It hasn't even given us a platform indication in the theatre box. just given us one yellow. We should get a zero in there. Although this signal is incorrect. Okay, so presuming we're going into the bay platform, platform zero... Uh, the TPWS loops would be set for 10, so if we go over them at about 15, I'm hoping the emergency brakes are going to come on. Uh, someone, I've got about 10 at the moment, locomotive location delivery pictures. I'm well aware that it's 15 across these points, guys. I'm now purposely trying to, trying to test the safety systems in-game. We'll slow down a little bit. But these should be set for 10. We'll go, we'll go over at 20. And hopefully, if all's well, this little red light's going to start flashing at me. This is where, this is where we're, we're chancing our luck. Buffers don't like to be eaten. Let's, let's see if this works. So there's the overspeed loops just coming up now. Hopefully, that little light's going to flash at me. <laughs> Emergency brake application. That's actually really disappointing. So, TPWS is in the normal position. We've come over that. Uh, we've come over there doing twenty, 
and it hasn't chucked the emergency brakes in. All, all loops going towards TPWS loops going towards buffer stops are set for 10. So they've told me that it's working correctly, but I have yet to see any evidence of that. That was not doing what it was supposed to do. Anyway, all the passengers have spilt their hot drinks and light refreshments. But we'll let them off the train all the same. <laughs> yeah, didn't he didn't like that at all. He didn't like that at all. But never mind. Right, let's see what sort of a score we get. You'll have to send it to DTG, the dad rail test. Yeah. It's broken. <laughs> Dan H, no. Train stop override button before you get to the grids. Oh, Sam, Sam. If you press that before you get to the grids. Have, have you, you made, made it, it to, to Paddington, to Sam? Train, uh, train driver Sam in the chat is out driving real trains tonight. Somewhere in the Thames Valley area. Um, and every time he gets to where he's going, he jumps in the stream. Have you have you made it to Paddington, Sam? I, I guess the fact that you're back on here, you must have done, or you've been, or you've broken. I mean, terminated a bit short. Uh, S SKR120 has subscribed. Welcome, welcome to Dead Rail. My throat is really going now. This is terrible. Reset and go, naughty, naughty. Uh, we didn't reset and go. It just didn't work. Just, just didn't work. No, it's terrible. It's supposed to work. It didn't work. Right, so we, as promised, we'll do a... Um, is there a decent scenario for it, maybe? Um, my selection of trains there. Uh, 395 that is running late. Tricky tunnels off the grid. No, we'll do, we'll, we'll do a timetable service. So, choose a route. Southeast and high speed. Timetable, 395. That's the one. And we will do a St Pancras. St Pancras International to Ashford Downsidings. St Pancras International to St Pancras International. Is that via Ashford? Drive this southeastern service from Ashford International to... No, we want to go the other way. Nope. Are they the Margate services mainly? Drive this southeastern service from St Pancras International to some from St Pancras International to Ashford International. I've not driven the route in that direction, so we'll have a little go at that. Um, let's put it in misty conditions. Let's make it November. Misty in November. Why not? And why that's loading, let's make 20p by showing you lovely people an advert. Skip ad, skip ad, skip ad. Click skip ad. Hey, Jake East, welcome to Dan Round, new subscriber. Great to have you here. Drive this service from St. Pancras International to Ashford International, class 395. 12 carriages. Oh, that's moody. Okay, so I'm guessing we're Stratford, Ebbsfleet, and Ashford, which is where the stream and the service will terminate. Okay, so safety systems in. Click, click, both of those, and we come over to here and do the TVM K. that one. KVB normal, TVM normal. And we're in the seat, key in. Lots of noise. Right, doors on the right. Okay, we've got line vaults already, so we don't need to do our CTRL pan up shoes down. That is already done. Um, unfortunately, the GSMR works, so we, don't, we can't set that up, which is really annoying. Um, so other than our lights, we want to be day running. Uh, don't feel there's much else in the cab we can do to get ourselves ready. That is uh, pretty much good to go. So we will sit here and wait patiently and have a look at the chat. What have we got? Who have we got in there? 
Richard the Train Spotter and more says smash that like button and subscribe to Dead Rail. You heard it from Richard the Train Spotter and more. Please do that. Great stuff. DET Trains. What train has the most uncomfortable driver's seat? Oh, that is a really good question. Um, I d I'm not entirely sure. Probably the Class 37, if I'm being honest. 37, maybe, maybe, yeah, pro probably the class 37. Are the trains I've driven, anyway. Or the second man seat on a class 375. There, or 387, the second man seat is awful. It's very uncomfortable. DT trains, most uncomfortable driver's seat, probably the class 73. Um, I, I find the seats on those after a little while, you get a bit of a numb bum. Closed doors, right. We should be able to do these hub lists, but we won't. Okay, just waiting for our brakes to come down a little bit, and we'll get some power in. It's four notches of power, this one, isn't it? So we'll put it into two, and slowly creep out the station. It's just as what type of biscuits do you like, Dad Rao? Um, Chocolate bourbons, shortbread... Anything like that. All biscuits are good. Wenzel HD, welcome to Denver, new subscriber. Great to have you here. All biscuits are good. Dan H, the DA seat on the Electrostar is crap. Uh, when you say DAs, are you are you referring to drivers' assistants? Is that is that the politically correct way of saying second man seat? Uh, is that why drivers tend to stand when driving the 70 freeze? Yeah, the good thing about the 70 freeze is because the seat just folds down to the back wall, you can stand up when you're driving them. Um, which, which is nice, especially if you're fatigued. So this being the flagship route and flagship train, there should be no faults on this. It should be absolutely perfect. We've got a green, we've got a D. We're going into London Tunnel 1. Joseph Adams, hello. Welcome to the stream. Yep, politically correct way of saying second man. Driver's assistant seat. Right, I'll have to remember that one. Pig and Bob, congrats on 13k. Well, hey, have we made 13k? I'm going to take your word for that. If we've made 13k subscribers, thank you very, very much, everybody. <laughs> I don't even know if you can hear my sound effects playing. I'll take that. That is excellent. Really pleased with that. Brilliant. Thank, thank you very much, guys. Right, we're good for 200. Let's go! Full speed ahead. Cab door is open. Is it? <laughs> I shouldn't be able to get into lock with the cab door open. That's terrible. Thank you very much, Joseph. Brilliant. Well deserved, someone. Thanks very much. No, I really appreciate that, everybody. That's 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 really really kind of of everybody. No HUD. Ah, uh, yeah. But if I, the trouble is, if I do this one HUDless, because I'm playing on keyboard and mouse, um, I end up sort of forgetting what position the power controller is in, so I end up powering when I want to be braking. So I I will I will leave the HUD on for that reason only. Uh, Mad Gamer, thanks very much. British Film Guy, thank you. Excellent. No, really pleased with that, guys, and thank you very much for um, thank you for watching the streams and supporting me, everybody. It really does mean does mean a lot to me. Right, two two five flashing, which means we can expect the speed to come down. At our next speedboard, we are coming towards Stratford International. So we're already at 200, but it is flashing, so we'll get a bit of break in. Um, 
Stratford International, where an international train has never stopped, but they're keeping the name. DT Trains, we all hope you get 15k subscribers before the end of 2022. That would be absolutely brilliant. One sixty flashing. Brakes are in though, so we're doing well. One hundred and static. So let's get a little bit more braking. So we need to be in a hundred um, at our next mile point. Probably need quite a lot of brake actually to get down for that. Someone, thanks very much for joining us, bud, and uh, see you next time. going to bust 100. Am I going to get kicked out by the TVM? We might be okay. Oh, that was almost spot on. Brilliant. Exploring all UK stations. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Back out into the foggy Stratford box. And this is where I overrun the station terribly because I'm really, really bad at judging my speed in kilometres an hour. I think someone said I want to be hitting the platforms at about 50, which as you can see I'm really managing to achieve there. That's looking alright, that might, that might just about stop where we want it to. That's looking good boys and girls, looking good. Southeast Rail Productions, Eurostar called at Stratford 2012 Olympics, but haven't since. I stand corrected, I didn't know that. That's a half decent stop at Stratford. For me driving on high speed on HS1 on the 395, that is... Oh, that's, that's like no hands, come on, we're going to stop in the perfect place. Ah, oh, oh, I'm still taking that. That's a good stop. We're having that. So, let's go into neutral. We are free step check, as it says there. 12 car train, 12 car mark, doors on the right. On this very, very foggy day. So, let's jump over to the Discord server, because Max has been asking very patiently. <laughs> when waypoints or SID slash stars are weird in aviation. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Joshua Art is posting... It's like London Paddington there. With featuring Crossrail on... Uh, is that Traxy or Open Traxy? Brilliant. If you want to join our Discord server, guys, there is an invitation link in the description below and it'll be great to have you over there. Right, locked doors. There is no station dwell time on these services. There really isn't. It's, it's really full on. Jude, official. Richard, I have a question. What is What train has the loudest horn in the UK? Um, no idea. No idea. Right, we're going up to 100k. We'll take power notch free. That should see us okay for the minute. It is Traxy, a train spot from Berkshire. Thank you very much. I, um, I'm an open train times user myself. What would you say was better, Traxy open train times, or are they all pretty much the same? I know a few people use Traxy. Hey, which of the trains are more? My PC is back up and running again. Superb, bud. Well done. Really, really pleased to hear that. Yeah, so using power notch free there. Hopefully, I'm not going to have to take the power off. I'm going to be able to keep it on. There we go, 225. If we pulled away in power notch 4, we'd have to shut the power off. Um, so yeah, by, being, by pulling away in 3, that means we don't have to shut the power off. Just gives the passengers a bit of a smoother ride as well. Uh, Hannah Scott, welcome to Dabra, our new subscriber. Great to have you here. You must be number subscriber 13,001. Uh, Traxy, it covers more areas than open terrain times. Oh, okay. that's. Uh, I, I will have to have a look at Traxy because all I've ever used is open terrain times. Traxy has more of the railway network cover, but open train times includes more info. Okay. Worth remembering. Traxy is great if you're looking at a particular location and waiting for a steam special. Okay, so we are in London Tunnel 
1. No, we're not. We're in London Tunnel 2. And this bit of the journey is a bit boring, so let's liven it up. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. I think we've got maybe one more round left in this game and it'll be time for a reveal. Uh, we have now been streaming for close to two hours and there's still 160 of you lovely people here who've got nothing better to do on a Saturday night than watch me play trains, which I am really, really honoured to buy. I'm not complaining, absolutely honoured. Absolutely honoured by that fact. Um, I'm, I'm kind of assuming that there's no like Strictly Come Dancing or Bake Off or uh, Love Island or anything like that on tonight then. Emma Wright, do you still play Step for County Railway? Yeah, we done an SCR stream just last night actually. Pig and Bob, who is a channel member with a little first class ticket next to his name. You can get yours from 99p. We are cheap channel membership on Daft Rail. Um, you want number 14, you are the third one on my screen. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Gonna give you a box number 14, guys. You've got 10 seconds to give me the locomotive livery and location. Does that help you at all, guys? Does that help you? Do let me know. Let me know what you're thinking. Anna Scott, I've been watching a few of your videos this week and lurking on the stream. Thought I'd say hello. Hello. Really great to have you here. Steve Wilson, I'm new to trains, but I have a question. Why are they called trains? Why are trains called trains? Um, someone, someone rushed to Google, quickly. <laughs> Right, we're coming out of London Tunnel 2. Finally coming out of London Tunnel 2. Into the fog. Oh no, it seems to have cleared up a bit. That's nice. There is a good sense of speed on this, and the lighting does look really nice. It's, it's definitely much better than the um, the Train Sim 2 routes. I, I just hope they, they do sort of go back to the Train Sim 2 routes and incorporate all the new features into them. Especially some of the popular Train Sim 2 routes, like Great Western Express, um, Brighton Mainline. Uh, that'd be really, really nice for them to do. Quite a lot of freight traffic in uh, Ripple Lane as well, though. Is that Ripple Lane? That's Dagenham, isn't it, that one? Jamie, you can use four out of Stratford and not break the speed. Ah, that's good to know, Jamie. We were pretty close to it in three. Um, I should give that a go next time. Mark, good evening. Welcome. Carmen A. Train comes from a French verb that meant to draw. Drag from Google. Ah, okay. Nice bit of railway trivia there, Carmen. Cayman. Cayman or Carmen? Cayman. It's one to remember for sure. Uh, DT Trains. Guys, what other train related apps are there other than RTT, TrackC, and Open Train Times? It's a good, good question to get you all talking. Mike Broom has become a member. Hello, Mike. Great to have you. We are at 222, all the twos. It's a good speed. Emma Wright, what's your favourite passenger operator? Message retracted. Did you not want an answer to that one? I don't know if I've got a favourite passenger operator, really. If I say Great Western Railway, would that would that please a lot of people? I mean, Great Western Railway covers such a huge area as well, don't they? They've got a good variety of rolling stock. Let's go with Great Western Railway. Yeah, Emma, Emma we're I'm, I'm going. With, I'm going with Great Western. The Railways of Cornwall. I am displeased. Why are you displeased, Railways of Cornwall? Let me know why you are displeased. And thank you very much for your locomotive location livery picture. GWR is amazing. Chilton, Liam. Chilton, my beloved. 
Yeah, train scotter. Rail record is pretty good. I've used rail record before now. I do like that one. Two two five flashing. So let's get a little bit of braking as we start coming down the hill. Uh, Cozy Gaming, how can I send stuff in live stream pictures? So it would depend on what your status is in the Discord server. If you are new to the Discord server, I don't think you're able to do that at the moment. That's something I need to fix. So we've got brake step free in, but because of the gradient, that's not really doing very much. Let's give it a little bit more. So 200 flashings, so we need to be doing 200 at the next marker board, and we're expecting a further reduction in speed. Steve Wilson, trains are French then, quite possibly, Steve. Uh, Calvin, Scott Rail, uh, they've got some beautiful routes up there as well. I'd particularly like to go on the Highland, West Highland. That'd be really, really nice to do. Uh, Davra, what numbers have you got? I'll let you know when we get to... Actually, we can cap light it. Uh, doesn't tell me. We'll have, to, we'll have to jump outside and have a look. Let's let's worry about driving and stopping at Ebbsfleet first, though, because I will bugger that up, and that'll be tea and biscuits. Oh, Super Tram, not sure why that was. Is, is Nightbot being a bit overly sensitive? Sorry about that. So, right, if we try and come into the platform at about 50, which is probably going to require a fair bit of break, um, we should be okay, hopefully. Yeah, definitely need a fair bit of break to get in for 50. Like I said, guys, you don't really want to be using the sort of more than 60% break if you can help it. If you need to use more than use it, but as a, as a general rule of thumb, 60% break step two is where where you want to be. Um, you always want to keep something in reserve just in case you overcook it. If you're coming into all your stations planning to stop using like 80, 90, 100% of your braking capacity, um, then you've got nothing in reserve. It's just not a good way to be driving, really. Ebbs Fleet International, and once we stop, we'll play a little game of L L L L L L L L. Twelve on the twelve, and you want to be stopping with as little break in the cylinders as you can. So we are a twelve-car train. We are stopped on the twelve-car mark, and our doors are on the right. Post your numbers now for locomotive livery location. <laughs> Indeed, post your numbers now. Let's try and get a nice sort of vantage point and we can get a nice... Uh, let's go trackside. We can get a nice sort of flyby shot as the train pulls out. There we go. Wait until 9.27. We are early. So what are we going with... Pig and Bob, you are the third one on my screen once again. This is completely fair and random, ladies and gentlemen. So we pick the third one on the screen. We used to pick the first one, um, but what was happening is people were sitting there with numbers and they, as soon as they heard it, they were just pressing enter. So that's why we go with the third one now, to give everyone a fighting choice. But it is Pig and Bob again, with number three. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Going to give you box number three, guys. You've got ten seconds to give me the Locomotive Livery and Location. This will probably be the last round before we do a reveal. That was quite a good one. It's revealed quite a lot there. Is that another signal that I see up in the distance? Could well be. Houses on top of the hill. Do let me know what you think. Through Susan's eyes, hello, welcome. No, no worries, no need to apologise. You're not late, you got here exactly when you intended to. If you're expecting to see me driving a 66, we've already done that.
beautiful and we're away One thirty. Two two five. All greens. Off we go. Full speed ahead. Darth Vader horn. Let's do it from outside. back in, I was doing the whole Imperial March. It chucked me in the train. How dare it? I've done that in real life. Dougie Gaming just subbed to again. For some reason, YouTube removed my sub to you. Oh, don't know what's going on with that. Yeah, sorry, Davidoff. Let's have a little look. So we have got uh, 395023 on the front. And we have got, let's have a little look at the back. Zero one five, so zero one five on the back, zero two three on the front. That's a nice shot there. I've not done this route going into Ashford yet. I've, I've only driven in, driven out of Ashford. I've not driven into Ashford. So um, from this direction, it's new to me. Jez Davis, relatively new. Are there general guidelines as in aviation for passenger? Comfort, e.g., acceleration, braking. Um, yeah, not not really. I mean, it's it's kind of down to driver's discretion. When you're stopping, the kind of general rule of thumb is you don't want to be using more than about 60% of your your braking. Um, you should apply the brakes progressively. So rather than just sort of going whack straight on, you want to sort of apply a little bit, then a little bit more, then a little bit more. And when you actually come to a stand, you want to come to a stand with the least amount of brake that you possibly can. So if you've got 80% braking. Um, as the train's slowing down, you want to be reducing that. So when you actually come to a stop, you've only got a little bit of braking, which kind of stops that sort of wallop. Um, but yeah, sort of a lot of the speed limits and stuff on the line are going to be set up for passenger comfort as well as anything else. So if there's tight corners and stuff, there's going to be speed limits in place, which are going to um, they're going to be in there for safety reasons, but also for passenger comfort. So yeah, no, it's all good. Mark Hazeldean visited some GWR stations today on the Reading to Basingstoke line, plus Basingstoke itself. Saw quite a bit of freight passing through. Saw some at 65s and a 70 and thought of you, Richard. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Mark. Captain Beanie, welcome to Dad Row, new subscriber. Great to have you here. I'm not sure why clapping is spamming. Oh, okay. It's Nightbot being a bit overzealous today. Gordon Leach, GT UK, got to go now. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Gordon. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Dad Row, are you on the dev build or the normal one as I had a bug in the 395? I am currently in the normal build. Um, I can't play this route in the dev build because sometimes things happen in streams and things get shown that shouldn't get shown. So I, this is the normal branch. Please don't read into anything that I've just said. <laughs> Super Tram 103, can you do the happy birthday horn? Um, can we do a happy birthday horn? Uh, I think that's the best we can do. Something like that. How, how was that? Does that pass? Yeah, Mark, we were in the 66 earlier on at the beginning of the stream. We've done, um, we've, we've done about... Why am I putting the brakes on? We've done about a 40-minute run in the 66. We're, um, we're in the 395 now. As we come over the Medway Viaduct. We should probably slow the train down, actually. Coming down the hill there, it sort of picked up a lot of speed. Trying to chase it as well, trying to do like creative camera angles and drive at the same time. It's not good. It's almost like a drone shot.
Let's get in the camp. Stevie Ock, welcome to Dabrown. He's subscribed. Great to have you here. If only trains had free tones. Ah, oh, indeed, Mark. Well, you could do so many more tunes, couldn't you? You really could. You really, really could. Okay, guys. I think it is time to do locomotive location livery reveal. A few of you have got this right so far. It's, it's been a good one tonight. It's been a good one. The 5x5 um, the five five grid is working much better than the 4x4. Four four, but I think it's time to do a reveal. Let's play locomotive livery location. So there's our grid. I'm going to press the button. I want to say well done to everybody who got this right. And a big thank you to the Railways of Cornwall for sending it in. It's time to reveal today's locomotive livery location. And that is a great Western Railway Class 150 at Truro. And we had a couple of people with the right answer there. So well done to absolutely everybody who got that right. And as I said, thank you very much to the Railways of Cornwall for sending that in to me. Do we have another one lined up? Uh, no, we done that one the other day. That's the Blackpool one. We done that one on stream the other day. There we go. So if anybody would like to send me any pictures for locomotive location delivery, I've got about f probably about 10 uh, at the moment ready to go. Um, but if you do want to send me any pictures, you can send them as a direct message via Discord. You'll find an invitation link in the description below. Or you can send them to me via my social media channels, which will appear on the screen about now. Hannah Scott is slightly confusing that the distance is in miles, but the speed is in kilometres. Yeah, I get exactly what you mean. Um, on the class 395, when you're running on the high speed section, um, your speed are being kilometres. But when you go onto the classic section, the speed are changed back to miles an hour. So the, the train kind of changes depending on where you're driving it. So yeah, I, I kind of see what you're saying. It is confusing. Um, being that we're in the UK, obviously we use miles an hour most of the time. So the kilometres an hour on the speed is is not the norm. Um, there are a couple of routes in the UK that use kilometres an hour. Mainly those fitted with the um, ETCS, European Train Control System. But it's, it's certainly not commonplace. Yeah, the stream will be ending uh, when we get to Ashford International. Railways of Cornwall, the semaphores did give it away a bit. Through Susan's eyes, Dad, I'm just wondering when you're posting new railway rules videos and railway videos. Uh, it is just a case of finding time to do them through Susan's eyes. I, I fully intend to do it. It's literally just finding time. Um, I, I really enjoy doing those videos, and I want to do. I want to do a lot, lot more of them. So we've got the the leaf full seasons just starting. So I think there's there's some videos about leaves on the line and that sort of thing that I want to make. Um, and I want to kind of look at leaves on the line as a train driver, kind of explain what the problem is. Uh, explain why it is actually is a real problem. Um, tell you that it's not just a problem exclusive to the UK. Everywhere in the world suffers with leaves on the line. And sort of just explain why we can't... Some people say, oh, why can't you put scrapers on the front of the trains? Or why can't you put brushes on the front of the trains? Or why can't you put lasers or flamethrowers that burn it off? And there's good reasons you can't do all of those things. So the kind of angle I want to take on a video is sort of explaining why we can't do those things, why, why you can't just put a high powered laser on the front of the train that will burn all the leaves off, or you can't just put a scraper or a brush. So um, yeah, that's the kind of angle I want to take on that. Uh, Mark Hazeldean, which routes apart from HS1 to kilometres an hour? I believe the, I want to say the Hartford Loop or something like that I believe is in kilometres an hour because they were doing um, ATO trials on that. I think some of the uh, the Cambria line in Wales, yeah, Super Trams just said. Maybe it wasn't the Hartford loop, but yeah, there's. I think that might be the only other one. Not product placement, I promise. I promise this is not product placement. Richard, the train spotter, and more Manning Tree meetup. We will. We will discuss that, bud.
Maxwell Wind Shepherd, what does ETCS do? You've deleted your message. European Train Control System. I'm not too clued up on it, if I'm being honest with you. I've not been trained in it um, as yet, so I would need to do some research. Three one three one two one was the ETCS test unit, I believe. I believe it was, yeah. Um, one of my colleagues, Pete Taylor, otherwise known as Spud, was one of the test train drivers on that. Steve Wilson, Ashford International ever had an international train arrive there? Yeah, Ashford International used to regularly have international services. Um, I believe they stopped during the pandemic and they haven't resumed though. Um, but yeah, it used to be direct services to Paris, Disneyland. Used to very very common. Um, quite a few services a day. Mike Kierwin, nearing the end of signalling school, may well be on the other end of the GSMRC. Great stuff, Mike. How have you been finding it? I've been told um, signalling school is pretty intensive. So we've got 139 of you lovely people in here tonight. If you haven't already, guys, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. I am considering um, the next live stream I'm considering maybe Monday evening. I'm aware that it's the Queen's funeral and I'm kind of sort of toying with myself as to whether that would be a disrespectful thing to do. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. Let, let me know what your thoughts are. Daryl Hearn, welcome to Dadra, only subscriber. Yeah, let me know what your thoughts would be on that, guys. Um, I, I am kind of contemplating it, thinking it, you know, Part, part of me is like, yeah, do it. And there's another part of me that's like, it's a little bit disrespectful. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, no, there won't be any stream tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to Legoland with the kids, um, which is all paid for by my company. It's like a nice kind of, thank you for doing a good job. Here's a day out, which is really nice. They're looking after us. So, um, yeah. Yeah, let, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think, whether it, be, whether it would be a bad idea on Monday to do a stream. Do it in honour of the Queen, says Lewis. I'm not. I'm not a particular. I'm not particularly a royalist. I, I have a lot of respect for the Queen, um, and I think you have to respect the situation, whether you like the Queen or not. You know, she's still somebody's grandmother, somebody's mother. Um, so I think you, you've got to respect the situation, regardless, haven't you? Uh, I can't stream Tuesday. Unfortunately, I've got something on Tuesday. Uh, Eldo Row would not be disrespectful if you did leave a little message at the start and end of the stream. That's, that's a good idea. Max's trains, do it. Uh, GJ, I think Monday is not so good. Mixed opinions there, guys. Mixed opinions. We'll see. We'll see. Dabrow, when you're in Legoland, I'll be in London walking up the mile. Are you going to join the queue, Max? Mike, yeah, signalling school's been going well, thanks. It's not mega difficult, but it probably helps to know a bit about the railway beforehand, as I'm sure you found with driving a train to... Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, before I started driving, I was on the platform. I worked on the platform for a bit. I was a shunter, then shunter driver. And kind of having that foundation and base knowledge was really, really helpful. It's learning stuff like terminology and, and bits and bobs like that. You know, that's, that's where you... Where you sort of get your real advantage if you've already got railway experience. Right, pay attention to driving. What have we got? 200 flashing. Stephen Wilson, I'm new to trains, but they are the best. Oh, glad you approve. Liam Ward, well said, Richard. No worries, bud. J Mainline, what about driving the Jubilee class on Monday? Oh, that's quite a nice fault. Maxwell, unfortunately not joining the queue. Maybe fortunately because of the length, yeah. Southeast Rail Productions, Eurostar plan to reinstate Ashford service in the next couple of years, although they are canning the Disneyland service. Yeah, I heard about the Disneyland service going. I thought it was quite disappointing, actually. Uh, we should be doing 160, shouldn't we? We should be doing 160 at the next board.
We are getting there. Was that the old British Ralph saying? We're getting there. Mike, it's the list that got me exam questions like list 13 reasons to authorise a driver to pass a signal at danger boggles the mind. Um, should we have a go? 13 reasons to authorise a driver to pass a signal at danger. Track circuit failure, level crossing failure, enter a section to assist a failed train, um, enter a section to proceed towards a T3 possession, um, examine the line. Uh, is there more? During an emergency permissive working. Ashford International Approach. So the TBM should switch itself off in a minute. Really not paying attention to my driving here. Rowan Place, Dadra, what is a shunter driver? So a shunter driver um, is a driver that works in the yard as a shunter, but as well as being able to shunt trains, they're also able to drive trains. One yellow, XC, which is Wrong Road, Canterbury. Um, we probably want to be slowing down a bit. Something's tripped me out. I did say we want to be slowing down. That safety system works. What's got me? It's so close to the end of the stream. Where's my TPWS indicator? <laughs> okay, so apparently, guys, the TPWS does work. Or TVM or KVB or whatever that was that, that threw me out. Something got me. If that if that was the TPWS that got me, then it works. But it should have had a 60 second timeout on it before I could release the brakes. <laughs> No, 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 I'm doing this one. I don't drink tea. I don't drink tea. What's beeping at me now? <laughs> What's going on? Everything's beeping at me. Stop! I'm losing the plot. That's a bad end to the stream. Three, three times today, Supertram says we've used tea and biscuits. Right, 12 for the 12 without spadding the signal. You have to remember with these trains, they've got great big noses on the front of them. So, full service brake application, set the DRA into neutral. We're a 12 car train, doors are on the left hand side. That is the first time I've driven into Ashford Station in that direction. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. That's, that's my excuse for poor driving. I think I can get away with that, just about. Spad rail, foul rail. Mark Hazeldean, have you ever had that in real life? Yeah, I've had TPWS activations in real life. Um, I had one going towards a permanent speed restriction. I had one going towards a red. Um, which were... Both my fault, I guess. I mean, I was the one driving, so obviously it was my fault. But yeah, I, I have had that. Tea and biscuits, definitely tea and biscuits. Definitely tea and biscuits. But we still managed the gold medal, which is not too bad, so I'm taking that. Speed's a bit uppy downy, uppy downy, uppy downy, uppy downy. But never mind, never mind. There we go, guys. I do hope you've enjoyed the tonight's stream. Uh, we had over 200 people in at one point, which I think is an absolute record. So, And we still got 157 people in now. So if you have stuck around to the end, thank you very, very much. It is really appreciated. If you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. And if you want to support the channel, you can become a member from 99p. Because we are, um, we are very cheap around here. 
<laughs> but simply by watching the streams, guys, you are support, guys, you are supporting me uh, more than you'll ever know. So thank you very much. Like I said, guys, if you want to join the Discord server, you can. It'd be absolutely great to see you over there. We've got a really friendly community over there. Uh, we talk about aviation, trains, transport in general, life in general, and, and just whatever, whatever takes our fancy. And you can also follow me on my social media channels, which are on the screen for you right now. Don't forget as well, we do have a merch store where we have locomotive location livery. Dad Rail merch. It's overpriced because I'm completely honest with you. I don't set the prices. Spring do that. But there we go. I'm just honest. What can I say? Thank you very much for joining me, guys. Thank you for putting up with me for the last two hours, two and a half hours. And I hope to see you very soon in another stream. Thanks for watching.